What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick modeling tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna model a gazebo using uh, circular shapes in SketchUp. We're gonna do this using smart modeling practices. So if you're looking for more tips for saving time in SketchUp, make sure you check out my free guide to time-saving tips in SketchUp by going to the SketchUpEssentials.com slash tips. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So I actually really like modeling gazebos and shapes like them because they're actually a really good example of what you can do and things that you can model really quickly in SketchUp once you kind of have an idea of the way that you want things to look. And so um, what this requires is just a little bit of planning ahead. And so we're going to start off and I'm going to erase out my default model. I'm going to center this whole thing on the origin. That just helps me when I need to like inference to this center point or anything like that. What the first thing we want to do is we want to draw a circle with the number of sides equal to the number of sides in our gazebo. So that's going to make our life a lot easier. So you don't necessarily want to come in here and draw this with like a 24 sided circle like this because the way that you build this gazebo is going to be much more like angular following um, like a certain number of degrees and a certain number of sides. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start off and we're going to activate the circle tool by tapping the C key. And when you first activate the circle tool, you can see how you can set the number of sides down here in the lower right hand corner. I'm just going to type in a value of six and hit the enter key. And you can see how my preview around my um, around my center point turns to a six sided circle. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and say that this has a radius of, uh, we'll go with a radius of something like uh, eight feet or something like that. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to build our entire gazebo based on the shape. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to push pull this up a little bit. So in this case, I'm probably going to push pull it up, uh, we'll say about six inches or so. And I'm just going to triple click on this and I'm going to make the whole thing a group. And so that's just to keep all of my geometry from kind of merging with itself. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and within this shape, I'm going to double click in here. I'm just going to offset this. Um, out probably about two inches. And I'm just gonna push pull this up just a little bit more. So I'm gonna push pull this up probably an inch or something like that. Maybe three quarters of an inch would make more sense. But I'm just gonna double click in here and uh, or I'm just gonna use the push pull tool and push pull this up in the center and then erase out this perimeter. And so what I have here is I have this top face that we're now gonna use in order to um, that we're now going to build the rest of our gazebo on top of. And so this has a point right here, a center point that you can inference off of. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the tape measure tool to drop a pair of intersecting guides. So when you drop intersecting guides, what that gives you is it gives you something that uh, this is going to kind of lock to and inference to. And uh, so it's real easy to find this center point. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to start by modeling one side or so I'm going to start by modeling my support posts on here and then I'm going to start modeling sides and we're going to talk about the smart way to do that in a second. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to figure this is going to be about six inches in. So I'm just going to draw a little edge in here that's about six inches wide and then I'm going to use the rectangle tool in order to draw a uh, four by four post in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap the control key to do this about center. You don't have to do that this way. And then I'm just going to move my mouse like this. And I'm just going to type in four comma four. And I'm going to draw this support post in here. And so one thing I'm going to do, and this is really going to depend on how you want your gazebo to be built. But I'm going to take this and I'm going to rotate it so that the center of this point is facing this corner. And that's kind of going to mess this little edge that we drew up in here. That's actually okay. We don't really care about that. And then I'm just going to double click in here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to make this a component. And we're just going to call this 4x4 four four support and hit the enter key. And so what we did there is we basically made this into a component. And now we can use the rotate tool in copy mode. So tap that Q key and set a base point here and then tap control to activate copy mode and move your mouse around here. And then once you've clicked, type in time six and hit the enter key. So now we have six copies of these and we can push pull them up and you can see how since they're copies of the same component, they're all going to um, change when one instance changes. And in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and say we're gonna get probably about, we'll say nine feet 
um, before we run into anything else. Um, actually, I'm probably going to do 10 feet. So we'll push pull this up 10 feet. And so now what I want to do, and we can leave these guides for right now, I guess. Um, now what I want to do is I just want to um, draw, I want to draw a guide up to about the height that the top of my uh, railing is going to be. So in this case, I'm probably going to put this railing height at, we'll say four feet. It might be more of a three foot, six inch thing, but we'll do four feet for right now. And so what I'm going to do, because I'm going to assume that I'm going to cut a, I'm going to cut a board that's going to run directly across here. So I'm just going to draw an edge. So I'm just gonna draw an edge across this face and then I'm just gonna fill this in. And then when I fill this in, I can push pull this up to like an inch and a half or something like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna double, and I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna make this a component and we'll just call this top board for right now. I know there's probably a more technical way of doing that. But um, so we've got this top board in here. Well, now what we wanna do is we wanna model our bottom board. And so in order to do that, I'm gonna figure this is gonna be um, we'll figure maybe like two inches off the ground and then we're going to have another board, but this one is going to be standing up. So we're just going to figure this is going to be kind of a standard inch and a half wide board. So I'm going to do a, I'm going to draw a line at a qu or three quarters of an inch this way and then an inch and a half this way. And then we'll do the same thing over here. We're just going to draw a little line, the same height. And we'll just do the same thing. I found it's easier to just draw these in instead of inference across because these aren't necessarily right on the x-axis. But I'm just going to draw lines across again like this. And that'll fill in a face. And then you can push pull this up like three and a half inches or something like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and triple click on this. I'll erase out my little edges down below. I'm just going to triple click and we'll make this a component and call it bottom board. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to model our um, vertical pickets. And so my assumption is the vertical pickets are going to be the same height as this bottom board. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line across here and then I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to click divide and I'm going to divide this into however many segments um, I think that this or basically however many boards I'm going to put in here. So in this case, um, we'll go ahead and divide this into 10 segments for right now. And so all I'm going to do is I'm going to go find one of those edges that I divided this into. I'm just going to model out my little board piece. So in this case, my assumption is, and this can kind of be whatever you want it to be. Um, in this case, I'm just using whatever length this inference to, which I think is going to be about three quarters of an inch. But I'm just going to double click on this and I'm going to make this a component. I'm just going to call this vertical picket. And so we've made that into a component. And so now what I want to do is I want to use the move tool in copy mode and I want to make multiple copies of this one at each one of these points. So I'm just going to move one over here using the move tool in copy mode and then I'm going to type in times should be times nine. I'm going to type in times eight and hit the enter key. And what that did is that created eight copies moving along this way. And so now if I double click in here and I push pull this up, you can see how these vertical pieces are in here. And remember, since they're components, you can actually come, come in here and make changes to one of them. And those changes will be reflected on the others as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to erase out my guideline because I don't need that anymore. And so for right now, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the top um, just because we're running out of time in this video. But I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to make this whole thing a component as well. And we'll just call this side framing or something like that. And what I'm going to do in this case is since I've made one of these that lines up perfectly on this edge, I can go ahead and use the rotate tool in copy mode. I'm going to type in times four and hit the enter key and I can use that to make four copies. So you can see how since, since I modeled one of these, I don't have to model the others because we've already done that. So 
I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw another face in here. And I'm just going to move that up. And I just drew it on the bottom there because it's easier to do. And um, so you can see how drawing it on the bottom, getting it lined up, and then moving it up since everything's grouped um, is a really easy way to do this. But what I'm going to do in this case is my assumption is that this is going to hang out a little bit more. Maybe like um, we'll say 12 inches. So we're just going to use the offset tool to move that out. And then I'm just going to push pull this piece up as well. And you could come in here and model the framing too if you really wanted to. So we're just going to leave this as is for right now because I kind of want to move forward with the tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and triple click on this and I'm going to group this just so that it doesn't, uh, it so that the geometry isn't in here intersecting with everything. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw, I'm going to draw another guide across this and then I'm just gonna draw another hexagon right here and I'm just gonna move that up um, whatever the height of my initial roof or my lower roof is gonna be so in this case I'm probably gonna move this up maybe about we'll call it three feet or something like that and now I'm just gonna come in here I'm just gonna draw in one corner of this roof and then you could make these into components or not. That's kind of up to you. I'm just going to use the uh, the rotate tool in copy mode again, and I'm just going to type in times five and hit the enter key. So you can see I was able to easily add that roof in here. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to use the offset tool in order to offset this in a little bit, maybe like six inches or something like that. Then I'm going to push pull this up um, and I'm going to go ahead and select these and reverse the faces. But I'm going to push pull this up, maybe about 18 inches. Then I'm going to offset this face out using the offset tool. And you can see how getting this inference point could be a little bit challenging. That's why I keep dropping guides across here. So you can see how now I can inference to that really easily. We're just going to do the same thing one more time. So we'll say this is going to go up like 24 inches or something like that. And you can see how I can use the, the rotate tool in copy mode again type in times five and hit the enter key in order to add this roof really easily. And so we could also come in here and add the, uh, we could uh, model out the framing in here as well. So if you wanted this to be like a series of wood boards or something like that, framing up and down, we could do that as well. But you can see how just by uh, basing this on a six sided shape, um, you can use this to create a gazebo really easily. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Um, do you model things based on geometric shapes like this? I just love having that sketch up conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.